Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Kurt with Rock County Adventures. Today we are going to take part of the Maker's Challenge 5 and that's basically uh, stepping out of your comfort zone, making something that you've never done before and have fun with it. So we're going to go ahead and flip the camera around and start creating. I have no idea what I'm doing um, and I am hoping this turns out how I picture it in my head. Um, but we I uh, went ahead and ordered some bismuth. Uh, this, so this is going to be my first time making bismuth crystals. But I'm going to try something else that I had in mind. And I hope uh, it'll work out. Uh, I'm going to use a, my hammer real quick. Just to try and break this up. Because I have a small uh, little like coffee cup mug thing I'm going to use. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of break this up. Or try to break it up. The reason I have it in the plastic bag is though hitting it and when pieces do fly off it stays contained in the bag where uh, instead of having pieces fly everywhere. Oh, that's what I was trying to avoid <laughs> happening but yeah. <laughs> Pick these pieces up. Now we have the bismuth in the stainless steel mug. We're going to turn the burner on, let it warm up, and then as it starts to melt, we're going to jump over to the table and start uh, the next process of this project. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to try and make some jewelry using bismuth, but in instead of making the crystals and then wrapping the wire around the crystals we're going to try and um, make it all as one piece uh, so i have um, an 18 gauge um, dead soft copper wire and then uh, these are i think uh, half hard wire um, 22 gauge 22 gauge and then this is i think uh, 30 gauge but the plan is let's see we do not need to make a full pendant. We just need to make like the bell for it. And let's see, we're gonna go with this size and we'll be using these pliers to start the bell process. We're gonna make different sizes. Um, so let's see, this, this, And then we're going to try and just bend this. Now we're going to use the 30 gauge copper wire and we're just going to take this and we're going to hold it right here um, and then just take the wire and wrap it around uh, right here a few times and now we're just gonna kind of do a little a little bit of weaving I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down to where it's not so long okay so now we're gonna take these pliers again and we're just kind of make another little loop um, on both of the ends right here. And if this turns out well, I will likely do the same thing, but in silver wire, because I think that would look best with bismuth. But copper is a little cheaper, and since I don't even know if this is going to work, that's why we're using copper. Okay, so we have these, and we're just gonna kind of split it up just a little bit. We're gonna do a little bit of weaving Okay, 
So now we're gonna go ahead and clip it right there. So if you guys have understand what I'm doing. So we have this and we're gonna, uh, what, what we were doing by making this design or any design really is, um, we're gonna dip this into the bismuth as it is uh, cooling to see if the uh, bismuth will it attach itself to the copper. And then adding all of this texture in here is going to allow the bismuth liquid to fill in all those gaps. Um, and that way it has a better grip so that way it will not fall off of the wire so easily. Um, so we're gonna make a couple uh, more of these. Before we continue, let's check in on the bismuth. It seems to be melting really well. I have the video speed times 10, uh, so that way uh, it's not a 30 minute part. But let's go ahead and jump back over and I'll show you the new pieces. Um, for right now, so that we have this one right here. Um, and again, it doesn't really have to be super pretty because this is just to add texture to the wire so that way the bismuth will attach itself to it. Um, there's this one that's just very basic. Um, and then this one has a little bit pr uh, more of a prettier design for the bell. We're probably only gonna put it in to about right here so that way this whole part sh is showing and this part is covered up. But let's go over to the stove top and try it with these three first and if so we'll be making more what we're gonna do is i just took this wire right here uh it's about i don't know eight inches long i'm gonna loop uh, this piece on it like that and then we're gonna dip it into uh, there and see, and see what happens first i'm gonna scrape the slag off the top and then we'll uh do that. There we go. Dip that in. Man, that's hot, my fingers are burning. <laughs> okay, so I put a wire around this so I can use it with my hot gloves. And scrape the top of it again. Oops, kicking the tripod all over the place. Look at, oh no, <laughs> my shakes. I'm not helping this. Okay, we're gonna drop this one in. may have messed this up a little bit, but part of the experiment. Okay, so before we continue the video, I just wanna stop and show you the three pieces that I made, uh, which is more of like, like trial and error. Um, the first one we started off with was I think this one. And if you noticed in the video, I uh, once I pulled uh, this out of the bismuth um, liquid, it, I continue to dip it back and forth uh, back in, which is something you do not want to do because it, it ruins the symmetrical uh, details um, that it creates and uh, ends up with something kind of like what I have, which is very sparkly, very beautiful as far as colors go and stuff, but um, it lacks in the type of detail that I'm looking for. Um, for these pendants. So uh, this is the first one. The second one was this one. That I don't really like at all. 
Um, and then the third one, the last one you just watched was this one right here. Whenever you dip the pendant in multiple times, it adds more layers, like a runny dried layer to it, um, which ruins that texture I was just talking about and just doesn't look that great. So I'm going to continue, but we are going to change the way I make the bells um, into something a little bit more simple so we can continue this trial and error. Um. Um, but before we start, I just want to show you this time I have this one that I made. I'm hoping it's going to sit at an angle like that so that way the bell doesn't touch the uh, bismuth and then it sits flat in there so that way this part does. And since the crystals uh, form uh, downwards, that's what I'm hoping happens. Um, and I put it on this wire to uh, suspend it uh, on the bottom there. So that way, um, because I have really bad shakes, and I'm hoping the um, having it perfectly still helps form better crystals uh, compared to the ones you saw a moment ago from the first try. So. And then we're gonna take this, I'm just gonna push it. There we go. Looks like the back of the copper bell is gonna get a little bit on it, but we may be able to work with that. There we go. copper's turning a different color. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And I'm not sure how this looks, so we're going to put it off to the side. Just got to figure this out a little bit better. So I'm going to try this style. This style again, just to uh, Dipping this in and seeing how it turns out. I can just hold the still. Well, that's kind of cool. I set this one off to the side, let it dry. You know, it's not too hot. I just burned the heck out of my finger a second ago. Ouch! Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> Didn't feel hot for a second. We're gonna push that down in there. I really hate how I have the shakes so bad sometimes. Okay, we're just gonna let that sit there for a little bit. While we're waiting on that crystal, here's this one. I think it would have been way cooler if I didn't drop it back in there. But it's still kind of cool. I may put it back in, remelt it, and get a different one out. But it's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Yo, look at that. Ah, it's not focusing. That's pretty cool. It's still not wanting to focus because I'm shaking so bad. But uh, I'm going to let this, this off to the side and let it dry off. <laughs> I'm starting to get the hang of it now. But the, like I said, this is my first time doing this, but having a lot of fun doing it. So while we wait on that one, here is the second one that just came out. So I think because it, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to take some diamond files and kind of file upwards at an angle to even this out because I don't really like how it's flat on top, but I don't know that's how it's supposed to be. So yeah. Kinda cool though. 
Well, that did not turn out. Nope. <laughs> Ooh, that looks cool. Oh no, this <laughs> is pretty big. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was not expecting this. <laughs> I was wanting it a lot smaller. Oh my gosh, look at that. I caught a big one. <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Okay, guys, we're gonna just jump in. I'm gonna show you all the crystal pendants that I made from starting point to finish point, and you can see the progression of how they turned out and how they've gotten how they got better. The very first ones uh, we're gonna start with is this one right here. Um, this was the very beginning, as you can see the weaving uh, that I did. And then I moved, the next one was this one. And the more you, when you're holding this in the bismuth, the more you move it around, the less likely the crystals are gonna be able to form. So if you shake a lot like I do, have a wire going across the top of your pot or something to hold it in place. Um, so that way that you can form uh, better crystals. Uh, the next series, after those uh, is this one. These with the bell going this direction, you would need a jump ring to go through there so that way you can wear them. This one I still need to finish uh, as far as doing something with the, for the bell, but just trying a bunch of random techniques uh, to see what works and what doesn't work. There's this one. I love the color selection that bismuth allows um, on these metallic pieces. Uh, the third try, about an hour and a half in, I just took copper wire and twisted it together. Um, and it turned out like this. It's kind of cool. This one kind of was like a stick figure. A little, little bit of cube action going on there on the top. Next one was this one. Got a couple cubes on the bottom. Still wasn't super happy with this. Uh, this one is kind of like the little cactus piece. Little prongs, arms. There was a lot more, but they broke off because the thinner the crystal is, the weaker it is. Uh, so that was the third bunch. And then by like 320-ish, I started doing this batch. Um, this one, I still need to make the bell on it, but the crystals are freaking cool. And uh, super happy with this one. I'm happy with it. So these next two, I was really happy with how the crystal structure came out, uh, as you can see. Um, and then I, this was just the exposed copper, but I went ahead and dipped it in the uh, bismuth uh, and just kind of coated it. And I'm gonna get the uh, diamond file later and file away to clean this up a little bit and put jump rings on them. Uh, these will be available for sale on my Facebook page. Uh, so that's super cool. The next one was this one. Came out with some amazing crystal structure as well. Uh, 
That's super cool. And then this one was the only weaved one uh, that actually turned out really nice. Look at that. I don't know why the camera's showing these as like so dark because they're not dark at all. Oh, I guess that dark that you're seeing is the actual uh, purple and dark uh, blues. But uh, that's beautiful. And then the last batch that I did was this bunch over here. And I pulled this bad boy out, this big fish. <laughs> I started getting delirious a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah. So like I've noticed that when, when making these, having this, the, the U shape, just this wire and bending it upside down to where these are, it's open on the top, um, is the best way to make these pendants. And so if you leave them in for a long time, this will happen. But if you leave them in for a short period of time, they'll turn out looking like this, uh, which is what I was wanting. Um, and then later you can take this, bend it backwards and weave it with the smaller gauge wire uh, like this one. It's still got to finish off that area, but uh, this is what I was going for. Super cool. And then the last one is my favorite. I did a triangle uh, shaped on the bottom with the opened wire and then left it in for probably a solid minute and pulled out this one, which was, sorry for the shakes. Uh, there was another crystal going off this direction, like from here to here, but it fell off, which I was fine with. But this one is gonna be a gift for someone, so. Uh, I just need to finish weaving it uh, like this one and uh, yeah but uh, I also made some uh, small crystal bismuth crystals while I was waiting for these to uh, dry um, but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, make sure to stop by all of the channels that are participating I'll have their links in the description in order uh, mine is posting a day late because a bunch of issues uh, took place, but uh, I am happy with my results and I will continue to be practicing them. So you will see more of these on uh, future videos uh, this year and uh, as I perfect my techniques on how I make these pendants and uh, I had a ton of fun. Part of the reason, or one of the reasons um, Maker's Challenge exists is so that way you get out of your comfort zone and try creating something new that you've never worked before and just have fun with it. And that's what this was. It was a ton of fun. But uh, I will let you guys go so you guys can go check out the other awesome content. And I'll see you guys next time. Remember to subscribe if you're new. I'll help me out. When we get to 5,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away some UV Beast uh, black lights. And uh, have an awesome day. Peace out. <laughs>